Hey everybody, and welcome back to Frontend Expert. In this video, we will be discussing TypeScript. TypeScript is simply a superset of JavaScript. What this means is that JavaScript syntax is all valid TypeScript syntax. However, TypeScript adds some extra syntax on top. Specifically, the syntax it adds allows us to declare types. So we can define what type a variable needs to be, and TypeScript will throw an error if we try to change that variable to a different type. So let me show you how this works. So first of all, let's say let's test equals one, two, three, and then we could simply say console.log test. And this is going to work just like standard JavaScript. So I can run this code and you can see we log out one, two, three, just like you would probably expect. However, TypeScript implicitly is saying that test now needs to be a number. So if I tried to change this to say the string of four, five, six, then we are going to get an error. So if I run this code again, you can see we log out this TypeScript error, unable to compile TypeScript, type string is not assignable to type number. And additionally in VS code, it shows this error before I even run the code. So I could hover over this line here, so line two, and you can see it says type string is not assignable to type number. And the reason for this again is that test is being assigned to the type of number. So we assign test to one, two, three, and because we haven't declared a type, TypeScript is assuming that this is going to be a number. That said, we can manually declare a type. So instead of simply saying let test, we can use a colon and then the type. So this is a number just like this. And this code's going to work the same way as before. We are getting the same error. However, if for example, I said that this is going to be a string, then now we get the error on this line because now we are trying to assign the number one, two, three to the string of test. So this is not going to work either. Now there is another type we can use that is simply any. So any essentially is sort of like a bailout. It's useful if you're converting a non TypeScript code base to TypeScript, and there's certain types that you don't want to worry about quite yet. You can use any as sort of a catch all, and this basically reverts to standard JavaScript rules. So now if I run this code again, it's going to work as you would expect. So we log out the string four, five, six. Okay, but then what's the correct way to do this? If we did want the variable test to be assignable to either a number or a string, how can we do that? Well, most of the time you probably don't want to do that. The whole point of TypeScript is to prevent this type of type coercion, which can lead to silent bugs. However, if we did want to do this, what we can do is we can say that this is a number, but then we can use a union type. So that is going to be a vertical bar and then another type. So this can be a number or a string. So this is essentially saying just that the variable of test can be either a string or a number. So here it is a number and here it is changing to a string. However, if I try to assign it to something other than a number or a string, we will get an error. So for example, if I try to assign it to an object, we now get the same error message we had before. So it's going to tell us that the type of object is not assignable to the type of string or number. We could of course make this work by adding in the type of object here if we wanted, and this would now work once again. Now we can actually name these union types that we create as a custom type. So we don't need this object anymore. I will get rid of that and change this back to the string four, five, six. But what we can do is we can create a custom type. So I'm going to come up here and say type, and we can call this num string, and we will set this equal to number or string. And then instead of using the union type inline like this, we can simply use num string. And now, of course, if I run this again, we once again are going to get four, five, six. It's going to work just like it worked before, except that we have this custom type now. And this can be useful when you need to use the same type for multiple variables and you need to make sure that they stay in sync and you don't want to repeat the same code over and over again. You can create a custom type like this. And now these types that we use don't actually need to be just generic JavaScript types. So for example, what if we had a type that was called state and we wanted the state to be either on or off. So we could use the union type of the string off 
or the string on. And now let's say that test is going to be of type state. And of course, this is going to give us an error on both of these lines because neither line is setting the test variable to on or off. But maybe this is initially going to be off. And then down here, we can change it to be on. And now both errors go away and we can run this code and we get on. So this can be a good way to create a type if you have something that's sort of like a Boolean, but maybe there's more values. So for example, maybe you have a status that is either success, error, or pending, and you need a way to represent that status as a type. One option for how to do that would be to use a union of strings. That said, there is another way that we could handle this case. And what that's going to be is an enum. So this is an enumerated value. So what I'm going to do is remove this and instead we're going to create an enum for the state. So we can say enum state, and this does not use an equal sign. So we simply open up curly braces like this. And then we give the enum its different values. So for example, we have the value of on, and we can set this one equal to the string of on in lowercase. And then we have the value of off, and we can set this equal to the string of off in lowercase as well. And now instead of using these raw strings, we need to use the enum and we can use this sort of like a standard JavaScript object. So we can say that test is going to be state dot off. And then we need to change it down here and we're going to change it to state dot on. And now when I run this, we are going to get the same thing that we had before. You can also, if you want, leave off the values in the enums. So this could just be on comma off. And you're simply going to get numbers. So we get zero because the state is on and that is the first value in the enum. If we change this back to off, so comment out this code, you would see that we get one. Okay, so now let's move on to functions. So I'm going to delete this code here and let's create a function. So we can say that this is going to be an add function and add takes in a value x and y. And all it's going to do is it is going to return x plus y. Now functions like this can actually create errors in standard JavaScript. If we accidentally passed in a string to this function, then it is going to concatenate the two values rather than doing addition. So what we can do is we can say that x is going to be a number and y is also going to be a number. And then we can also set the return type of the function. So we do this after the end of the parameters. So we can say that this function returns a number. And now of course we can come down here and we can say console.log of add, let's do one comma two, and we will end up getting three. And one other small point with functions is what would happen if we didn't want to return any value. So maybe all we do in add is we say console.log of x plus y. Well, now we are not returning a number, so we can see we get an error message over here. It says a function whose declared type is neither void nor any must return a value. So this actually gives us a hint as to what we need to do. So if we need to return nothing essentially, then what we need to do is return void. So by setting the return type to void, we are essentially saying that nothing is going to be returned from this function. And then in the call to add, we do not need the console log wrapper anymore since we do that in the add function. And now we can run this code and it works the same way as before. Okay, but now let's delete all of this code. And what I want to talk about next is going to be objects. So let's say we have an object that is const Connor, and we set this equal to this object here that is going to have a name of Connor and the course of front-end expert. And this is fine. It's implicitly going to get a type of object. And more specifically, you can see the type is this object that has a name and a course, and both are strings. And this seems fine. It's working how we expect. But now what would happen if we have another object? So we can say const Clement and set this equal to an object as well. This one has a name of Clement, and I will set the course for Clement to be Algo Expert. So now Clement and Connor are the same type, but how do we make sure that they stay the same type? For example, I could add 
an age to Connor. And the age is now making these be different types because Clement doesn't have an age. So the way we can do this is with an interface. So we can come up here and we can create an interface very similar to how we created the enum. So we can say interface and then we give it a name. So this will be an instructor interface. And then we open up curly braces like this. And now inside of the interface, we say what the keys are for the object. So first of all, we have a name and this is going to be a string. And now traditionally we use a semicolon here with some of the newer TypeScript compilers. It will actually allow you to use a comma, but the traditional way is with a semicolon. That is what you tend to still see. And then we can set the course as well to also be a string. And now what we need to do is change these declarations to have a type of instructor. So these are both going to be the type of instructor. Okay, so now if I try to add the age key to Connor again, then it's actually going to give me an error. So what it says in this error is type, and then it describes the type of what this is. So it is a name with a string, a course with a string, and an age with a number is not assignable to the type of instructor. So this is what we want. It's making sure that Connor and Clement stay the same type. But what if we did want to allow an age, but we wanted it to be optional? How can we do that? Well, we can come back up to the interface and we can create an age and we can make this be a number. But now we have an error for Clement. The issue is Clement doesn't have an age. And what if we didn't want to add an age for Clement? How could we solve this? Well, to make something optional, it's actually pretty simple. Right after the name, we simply add a question mark. And now this says that the age is optional, but it must be a number. So for example, if I tried to make the age be the string of 24, we now get an error, but we can have the number of 24 if we want. And next, we can also use interfaces with classes. So I'm going to delete Connor and Clements here, and we can create a class that is going to be algo expert instructor. And the class can implement, so we say implements an interface. And in this case, it is going to implement the instructor interface. And now you can see we are getting an error because right now this class does not have the correct instance variables, but we can solve this by simply saying that the name is going to be a string here, as well as the course is also going to be a string. And now we have reached the very minimum of what a class needs to do to properly implement this interface. But then we could also add a constructor. So we could say the constructor is going to take in a name. And what it's going to do is it's going to say this dot name is equal to the name. And it's going to set this dot course equal to algo expert. And then we should also add a type here. So we can say the name is going to be of type string. And now I'm also noticing that I used the capital string instead of lowercase string for the interface as well as for these string variables here. So this is actually a good point to say what the difference is here. So you can see that I can use lowercase or capital string, but there is a difference. So the lowercase string is the primitive value of the string and the uppercase string is the JavaScript string object. So most of the time we actually want the lowercase string. So I can change all of these to be the lowercase string instead of the uppercase string. Okay, so now we can actually create an algo expert instructor. So let's come down here and we can say const and this one will be Tim is equal to a new algo expert instructor and the name will be Tim. And now if I hover over Tim here, you can see the type is algo expert instructor. And then if we were to look at the algo expert instructor type, which is this class, it implements the instructor type. So Tim is also an instructor. Okay, so now let's delete all of this once again. And what I want to show next is something called generics. So let's say we had an array. So we can say const array is equal to the array of one, two, three. And this is fine. We have an array of numbers, but what if I also had in this array, the string four? by default, TypeScript isn't actually going to prevent this. 
But what we can do is we can change that. So we can say that this array is of type array. So this is the array JavaScript class. But then we can use a less than sign and a greater than sign. And inside of these, we can give it a type. So in this case, I want these to be numbers. So now we are saying that we have an array of type number. And you can see we get an error when we try to add a string to the array. So we can get rid of this string. And now our array works as expected. Now this concept is known as generics. So when we use the less than and greater than sign like this, it is called a generic. And we can actually use generics in more powerful ways with our own functions and interfaces. So for example, let me create a new interface. So I'm going to get rid of this and we can call this interface getter setter. And as normal, this interface describes the shape of some objects. And for these objects, I want them to have a get and a set key. And both of these are going to be functions. So we can start with set, and we can say that this is going to be a function. And the function is going to take in a key as well as a value, and it's going to return void. So this is the syntax we use to create an interface with a function inside of it. And then we are also going to have a getter function. So this is going to be called get, and it's going to take in the key, and it's going to return some value. But now the question is, what is the type of this value? So we know that this is returning whatever type the value was that we set. So we can say that this is just going to be type value, but notice this is capital V value. So it's different from the value parameter, but we want that parameter to have the same type. So we can say that this is also type value. And by that logic, the keys should also be the same types. So we can say that this is of type key, and this is also going to be of type key. But now these types don't actually exist. So how can we create them? Well, what we can do is use generics. So we can come up here, and we can say the interface takes in a type that we will call key and a type that we will call value. Okay, so now we have the key and value as generics. And when we use getter setter, we need to actually set what these types are. So let's do just that. We can come down here and we can create a class. And this is going to be called string num getter setter. So this is going to use strings as the keys and numbers as the values. And it's going to implement, so we can say implements, the getter setter interface. But when we implement this interface, we need to tell it what the key and value types are. So we can say the key is going to be of type string and the value is going to be of type number. And now this class works just like any other class. So maybe what we do in this class is we keep track of some map. So we can say that we have a map and this will be a map class, which also uses generics. So we have a map of string to numbers, and this is going to be set equal to a new map. And I do recognize that we are simply making a wrapper around the map class at this point, but the point is just to illustrate how generics work. So now we can implement the set and get methods. So we can start with set and it's going to take in a key, which is going to be a string and a value, which is going to be a number. And the return value is going to be void. And then we can open up the method. And all we need to do here is say this dot map dot set, and we will set the key to be the value. And then we can also do get. So we can say get this has a key that is a string and a return value that is going to be a number. And all we do is return this dot map dot get of the key. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to using generics. When we create the type, we can use a generic type that we just make up a name for. And then when we actually use the interface, we can set what those types are. So in this case, we implemented getter setter with string and number. And with that, that's going to be the end of this video on TypeScript. To close it out, I do recommend using TypeScript in pretty much any medium to large sized JavaScript project. It can prevent a lot of bugs and save you a lot of time down the line. That said, for smaller projects, you can use it if you prefer. However, it can actually just add 
an extra layer of complexity that you don't need with those smaller projects sometimes, so it is up to you and your personal preference. Additionally, this video was intended to give you a high-level overview of fundamental TypeScript concepts, but there are naturally way more and you're not going to be able to master all of TypeScript from just this video. If you are looking to learn more about TypeScript, I'd recommend going over the official documentation as well as playing around with it in your own code base. Moreover, a great way to practice would be to solve problems on Algo Expert using TypeScript. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something new. I'll see you in the next one.